Hello guys. So today we have got MacBook Pro and in this device actually keyboard is not working. So let's see what's wrong. As we can see actually trackpad is only working but the keyboard is not working. So Previously, they have tried to fix, but they will fail actually. So, as you can see, let me show you inside the microscope. As you can see, actually, there's multiple things has been done. Uh, they already has been removed all the diodes actually, and it looks like they already has been replaced both the chips actually. Now let's see why this is not working actually and as I can see actually the IPD cable is, has been changed as well actually <clears throat> so now let's see so as I can see actually the key uh, the trackpad connector has been replaced look at this oh, this looks good actually so only and only the keyboard is not working so the LED has been fixed the trackpad but they were failed to repair the keyboard so now let's understand how the keyboard works inside the MacBook Pro M1 okay so this is the M1 semantics so now let me open the board view as well actually so here's the board view actually which I am using Flex BV so as we can see actually JT400 is the touchpad connector and JT200 is the keyboard connector and DZT201 this is the board actually this is UT102 keyboard is not working basically the trackpad is working fine so as you can see actually the UT102 here basically what are the mandatory things which require run the keyboards so this is the chip which is responsible and here's the two chip actually this is the drive pins and here's the sense pin so here is the hardware ID and keyboard ID caps lock LED enable and here's the reset signals and here's the interrupt which is not connected basically and here's the clock and data and here's the power pin and here's the power pin as well actually and this is the sense pin and this is the keyboard control left right shift and all and this is the reset and this is the address and here's the I2C and this is the interrupt so basically how this keyboard is going to work so this is one of the important things so once uh, this this is communicating with the keyboards these two rails the drive and sense pins then how the data is going to be exchanged through the processor basically the data should be goes to the processor that is called m1 processor so it is no spi it is only and only i2c which is coming from where let's see this i2c is coming from the trackpad jt400 trackpad connector so how the data is passing, how the communication is happening actually, we have to understand the logic first. So whatever is data being exchanged through the keyboard chip, it's being exchanged through the I2C. So and it's being carried forward through the SPI. Because there is no other routes, there is no other way to communicate directly. So, 
we have to keep this in mind while diagnosing so how idoc works this is one of the important key once the keyboard is working then definitely idoc will work and the data will get exchanged through trackpad and through the spi ports here is the spi ports the trackpad data is being exchanged through the spi and even although the keyboard data is being exchanged through the spi so in that case as we know actually the trackpad is working perfectly but the keyboard is not working so what we have to monitor first of all we have to check the keyboard chip input reset drive pins and sense pins so as you can see actually the one box is one bolt so once it's goes up you can look this is the base one 1.8 almost it's not crossing the second blocks so this is a 1.8 volts basically but this is the look the, here is the max maximum voltage actually so these are the ripples which are getting calculated and it's showing 3.0 something something so don't get confused so we are getting the input volt and let me see the reset actually is it high or not yeah that is high as well actually so reset now it's time to check the drive pins okay so here's the drive pins As you can see the drive means it's like a common rail basically on the drives there is no power but let's see the sense so we are getting the sense now let me try to press the keyboard yes as you can see actually the data is being exchanged but it's not it's not working actually so as you can see once i press the keyboard that goes to low so it means there's a power actually so it's working that is going to low sense and drive pins both is functioning actually so even although if some of the pins are not functioning then some of the key will work but here none of the keys are working as you can see the keyboard sense pin it's working perfectly and the drive pins as well actually so even although if some of the keys are working some of them are not working then yes we can say there could be some issue related to keyboard chip there could be some sense pin or drive pins might be not good actually so we have to check step by steps all this pin but in this case none of the keys are working so in that case we don't need to focus here in this area actually i have tested on both actually so now first of all i have to check the auto c while pressing the keyboards as as you can see actually so which key i was pressing this is one of the most important things so while pressing the data is being exchanged through i to c or not yes so as you can see actually uh, i have pressed and the keyboard has been pressed already so now i am going to probe on i to c and c the i to c is always high there is no communications in between so why there is no communications we need to understand that so now it's time to turn off the device and turn on it turn on again 
in that case your trackpad could be faulty as well actually as i can see we have bought the data we have bought the data once it's been started there was a communications actually <clears throat> so first time it's communicating but later on doesn't communicate this path is very important what is an interrupt this is one of the important things how will you check the interrupt signals through multimeters is it possible to check 100% perfectly no never you can't test it there are some reasons on the multimeters you only can test the voltage directly okay this is going high this is going low okay once you press that will goes low but actually you can't see the signals you can do some partial test but you can't do some perfect test so now let me do a test once we press anything on the keyboards the interrupt signal will release from the trackpad and will goes to the keyboard chip and the data will get exchanged through the i2c but that was not happening at all so in that case let me test this pin Okay, this is the interrupt pin. While pressing, it directly goes to low. Interrupt means it's only send a once signal and then comes back in the normal states, and the keyboard functions will start working. But no, it's it's not like that actually. This is always low. So. I don't think so. This is good actually, because the I two C is not communicating at all. And why I two C is not communicating? Because of the interrupt. There is no any other things. None of the keyboard is keyboard is working. So as we can see here, nothing. Nothing means nothing. You can see. Now I'm taking the multimeters. There's a lot of things, a lot of work has been done actually in this logic boards. So here is the interrupt. So I'll be doing the dashboard mode test. Getting value, but this could be from the chip as well actually. So let me remove this and see pin number three. As you can see, this is permanently open. So the pin number three is permanently open. There is an issue. Basically, let me show you the rule. Actually, there is no pull-up resistors on it. There is nothing. There is no power, which comes from the trackpad, because that was always high. That was always high, and I was getting the voltage. So you have to understand that logic, actually. if you don't understand this will be very difficult i'm showing you on the multimeter you are getting 1.8 no power is coming from the trackpad okay so now let me connect that interrupt pin maybe uh, this is burnt totally so do to this actually yep so as i can see actually fan 
finally we have connected the broken track. They have tried all the way actually. They have tried all the possibilities but there was some very small mistakes they have left. So now let me connect and show you how actually this works. Things can be quite simple but if you know the logic actually but sometimes it may give a lot of issues. So the device is starting as you can see the interrupt signal. Once it's been pressed, that's it. This is called interrupt. Interrupt, you have to understand the meaning of the interrupt. Like there's a meeting, there's a meeting, you have sent a messenger, he has interrupt a person and then run away from there actually. So that is called interrupt basically. So while testing, we was getting low signals. Whenever we was pressing on the keyboards, we was getting a low signals. Now you can see this is called interrupt. So I think the keyboard might be working. I'm very sure. Yeah, as you can see actually, keyboard is working. So now let me let me show you something. Let me show you in a practical way actually how I2C works. Okay, as you can see this is the high. Once I have pressed the keyboards, the data is being exchanged because there is an interrupt signals which is interrupting to the chip to communicate with the keyboards and once the keyboard is communicating the data is being exchanged through the I2C and it's going through SPI to the M1 chip. This is M1 chip and it's communicating. So before was something else in the older devices actually. So later on definitely I make the video on that as well actually. So as you can see this is the data which we are getting. So. Why this is so important, as you can see in this video, we teach all this. So guys, if you want to join a course, there's a down below, all the informations available. You can give us a call or you can contact us on the WhatsApps. Thank you so much.